Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Komal Kabul Shekhawat and I hope you all are doing good and keeping safe. So I create videos on how to do econometric analysis using SPSS, E-Views, Stata and R. So in this video, I am going to discuss how to run a unit root test for a time series data. So before proceeding with the video, I would request you all to subscribe and hit the like button if you haven't yet. So let's get started. So first of all, to run the unit root test, you need to import your file. So for that, go to file, open, foreign data is work file. If your file is in Excel format, and then browse your file, select it, and open it right so click on next okay so you can see over here the file has been imported so there are total 50 observations and suppose i am dealing with only two variables one is dependent and the other one is independent okay so the question is why do we need to run the unit root test so if there is a presence of unit root or your series is not stationary, then you can't proceed with further estimation. That's why it becomes pertinent to check the presence of unit root test in your series. Okay. So suppose I want to check whether this independent variable in my data set is free from unit root or not. So double click on the variable for which you want to check the unit root or if you want to check whether the variable is stationary or not. So you can see the entire information or the entire data for that particular variable is opened. Now go to view unit root test and then select standard unit root test. So you will see this dialog box will appear in front of you and there are various tests available to check the stationary of a series. So if you click on this drop down option, you can see there is augmented Dickey Fuller test, there is Dickey Fuller GLS test, Phillips parent test, NG parent test. Okay, so you can select any one of these tests to check the stationarity of a series in a time series data. Okay. Then there is option for whether you want to check the unit root at level at first difference or at second difference. If the series is not stationary at level, then we proceed with first difference and second difference. Okay. You can also check the presence of unit root at intercept, bit trend and intercept and none. Then you need to select the lag length. Okay. So there are various uh, Automatic selection criteria like archaic information criteria, squads information criteria, Han and Quinn. Okay, so you can select any one of these criteria to choose the maximum legs and it will automatically select the number of legs. Otherwise, you can select the user specified option wherein you need to mention how many leg length you want to take into consideration. So I am proceeding with automatic selection. So once you have selected the test time, test for unit rooted level and with intercept, you need to click on OK. Now, as you can see, these are the results for augmented Dickey Fuller unit root test for this particular independent variable. Now, the null hypothesis in case of unit root test is that there is a presence of unit root in the series or we can see the series is not stationary, whereas the alternative hypothesis states that the series is stationary, right? And we check on the basis of the level of significance. So you can check either at 1%, at 5% or at 10% level of significance. So usually we proceed with the thumb rule or widely used 5% level of significance. If the probability value is greater than 0.05, in that case, we reject the alternative hypothesis and we accept the null hypothesis. This means that we are rejecting that the series is stationary and we are accepting the null, which states that there is a presence of unit root. All right. 
So let's have a look at the probability value of the augmented decay cooler test statistic, which is 0 0.8975. So this value is greater than 5% level of significance. So we reject the alternative hypothesis. So we conclude that there is a presence of unit root in this particular series. Okay, and the series is not stationary. So now what we do is we go to view unit root test. Again, select the standard unit root test. And instead of level, now we need to check at first difference whether the series is stationary or not. So once you have selected first difference, keep rest of the things same and then click on OK. Now you can see the probability value of the augmented Dickey Fuller test statistic for this independent variable. So this probability value is although greater than 5% level of significance, but it is less than 10% level of significance. You can see this value is less than 0 0.10. So if we are following the 10% level of significance rule, then in that case, we can conclude that the series is stationary at first difference, okay? But suppose if this would not have been the case, even at the first difference. So in that case, go to again the unit root test and standard unit root test. And instead of intercept, you can select none, okay? You can keep it at none and first difference and keep the rest of the things same and then click on OK. So you can see the probability value is less than 5% level of significance. So this means that the series is stationary, OK? So this is how you can check for unit root for a series in case of time series data, OK? Similarly, you can check the unit root using the Phillips parent test. So for that, you need to go to view unit root test, again standard unit root test, and instead of augmented Dickey Fuller, select Phillips parent test over here. Okay. And initially you need to proceed with the level and you can keep it at none also, right? And keep the rest of the thing as default and then click on OK. So you can see the probability value, it is again greater than 5% level of significance. So we reject the alternative hypothesis and accept the null hypothesis. And this means that there is a presence of unit root or the series is not stationary, right? So to check at the Phillips parent test, again, go to view, select unit root test and standard unit root test. And this time, instead of level, you can check it first difference, right? And keep the rest of the things same and click on OK. Now you can see at first difference, the Phillips parent test statistics probability value is less than 5% level of significance and it is even less than 1% level of significance. So now one can conclude that since the probability value is less than 5% or even less than 1% level of significance. So we accept the alternative hypothesis. That is, the series is stationary with no intercept, no trend specification and at first difference, right? So this is how you can check the unit root or stationarity of a series using augmented Dickey Fuller test and Phillips parent test. So I hope you liked the video. Please click on the subscribe button and keep following the videos. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.